Hello and welcome back to another World of Warcraft lore video. This time we are going to be talking about Anduin Lothar, also known as the Lion of Azeroth and probably one of the best known heroes of the Alliance. Lothar was the last true descendant of the ancient Arithai bloodline and they were actually the first humans on Azeroth. It was the first kingdom, I suppose, when all of the tribes actually collected together. So, in order to just do the full story of this character, let's go right back to the very, very beginning. So, he grew up in the kingdom of Stormwind, and um, he spent most of his childhood with two of his friends. The first one was the Prince of Stormwind, Lane Rin, and then Medivh, who is the son of Aegwin and the last guardian of Tirisfal. And it seems like these friends, essentially, they kind of split and went off in different paths, I suppose, when they came of age. Um, Lothar decided to join Stormwind's military, Medivh was busy with the whole Last Guardian thing, and then Prince Lane probably had to deal with his princely duties. So, as for Lothar himself, well, he was very skilled at the arts of warfare and just being a very good soldier. He was well regarded and he received promotion after promotion, and he eventually was made a knight. And from his position of being a knight, he was able to um, further secure a position in the Brotherhood of the Horse as the Armsman. Now, the Brotherhood of the Horse was the formal name of the pre-First War Knights of Stormwind. These guys were the strongest warriors that Stormwind had to offer, so having a prominent position with them was definitely a great honour. Now, the Brotherhood would eventually meet its end. Many of the Stormwind Knights were killed by the First Orcish Horde during the First War, and then in between the First and Second Wars, they were transformed into Death Knights by Gul'dan. Essentially, he got his um, Orc minions to kill themselves and then bind their souls to the corpses of the dead knights, thus making the first Death Knights. But that's also a story for another time. So after all this happens and he gets his promotion, a few years pass, and then the Dark Portal opens and the first Orcish invasion of Azeroth begins. The Orcs ravage the countryside, being initially utterly dominant. Nobody knew they were coming, but eventually, Lothar would lead the armies of Stormwind against the Orcs, and after leading multiple attacks, he was able to hold them back at the Swamp of Sorrows. He himself was a very strong advocate of meeting the orcs in battle, rather than sitting back idly and letting them rip the kingdom to shreds, and then just starve out Stormwind. Now, he did actually end up having a bit of a lengthy break mid-war. He led an expedition after a band of ogres who stole an artifact called the Tomb of Divinity. This was something that was very of um, much significance to the, uh, the people at Northshire Abbey, probably a very important tomb of the light. They were eventually led into the dead mines where they were overran and taken captive. Over a period of about 20 months, the expedition members started to die off, most likely being eaten by the ogres, let's be honest. Finally, troops did arrive and rescue them. Lothar, after this ordeal, went right back to his station in the army and kept the fight going against the orcs. He was eventually contacted by a guy called Khadgar, who was the apprentice of his old friend, Medivh. And Khadgar revealed that it was actually Medivh who opened the Dark Portal and allowed the orcs into Azeroth. Khadgar also told Lothar about just some of his general suspicions and the odd behaviour of Medivh. Now, Lothar was completely horrified by his old friend's corruption, and along with his other childhood friend, the now king, Lane Rin, he led a band of knights into Karazhan. They were successful in dealing with the threat, and Khadgar stabbed Medivh in the heart while Lothar beheaded him in one strike of his sword. This would actually be rather disruptive to the Horde, because at the time, Gul'dan noticed um, that this raid was happening, and he needed to get information about the Tomb of Sagaris out of Medivh's mind. So while Khadgar, I'm um, sorry, while, um, while Gul'dan was inside Medivh's mind, Medivh was killed, and this caused Gul'dan to fall into a coma, which definitely led to a fair bit of disarray. And this actually led to some extreme problems for the orcs. Blackhound the Destroyer, without the guidance of Gul'dan, because he was now in a coma, was actually killed. And uh, Ogrim Doomhammer took over leadership of the Horde. Ogrim was... He was far, far more capable than his predecessor, and having learned from the mistakes of the previous attempts, they started to claim an increasing number of victories against the Kingdom of Stormwind. Finally, Corona half orkin who was also at Medivh's Tower during the time, um, assassinated King Lane. She had essentially been serving as a bit of an envoy between the two, but eventually she was unable to stop herself from killing the King because of Medivh's mind games and then Gul'dan's magic. The sacking of Stormwind and basically the disarray of the kingdom soon followed. 
After the humans' defeat in the First War, Lothar fled way up to the northern kingdom of Lordaeron, and it was here that he secured the help of King Tenerus Menethil II. This was Arthas' father. The king was a very skilled diplomat, and he managed to form the Alliance of Lordaeron. This initial alliance was comprised of the humans of Lordaeron, a contingent that was sent by Kel'Thalas, and then finally the Wildhammer Dwarves. Later on, the Bronzebeard Dwarves and the Gnomes would join the alliance after Kazmodan was liberated. In another deft diplomatic move, the king placed Lothar in command of the alliance armies. This was done because he really represented a fallen kingdom, and therefore he was a neutral party. He, it wasn't just some human coming in and taking over everyone else's forces. Lothar then formed a bit of an inner circle, well, a, a more an upper echelon of important people, such as Dalen Proudmoore, Uther the Lightbringer, and Khadgar. And these people led a very effective defense against the orcs, though things were still very tough. Eventually, Gul'dan would actually betray his people. And what he did was, he wanted to find this uh, place called the Tomb of Sigaris, because obviously with Sigaris being a titan, there was probably great power lying there. And he took a very, very large portion of the orc army, probably from 20 to 40 percent with him. This was, of course, absolutely a crippling br blow to the, um, to the war effort. Lothar then seized this opportunity and he crushed the remaining of the Horde army, liberating Kazmodan and eventually pushing them all the way back to the Black Morass. Lothar was actually then killed in a battle against the orcs. We're not really sure what exactly happened though. In the Warcraft 3 manual, it said that Lothar was killed by Doomhammer in single combat after Doomhammer led a charge out of Blackrock Spire in an attempt to break the siege. The duel was said to have lasted for hours, but the younger and more naturally strong Ogrim Doomhammer was able to emerge victorious. According to the Warcraft RPG source material though, this is unlikely. Um, in lore, um, apparently Brands Bron Bronzebeard said this, um, because uh, basically of Lothar's skill, and um, in Warcraft 2, the way Lothar died is that him and his forces were ambushed and trapped after an attempt to negotiate with the orcs. So really, we just are not sure how this guy died, but what we do know is that he did die. Now, this is not really the end of his story. Ogrim Doomhammer thought that the death of Lothar would just be a humongous blow to morale, but one of his generals, his preferred, essentially, apprentice, Tyrolean, took up his sword and shield and led their army to victory. The orcs were pushed right back through the Dark Portal, and the events were ended by Khadgar closing the portal. The forces who led the Alliance expedition through the Dark Portal named themselves the Sons of Lothar in his honor, and they erected a large statue of him in the middle of Honor Hold, basically to just um, pay tribute to the guy, to, to honor him, I suppose. Um, yeah, you can take that one for free. So that is it for Lothar. He's definitely a classic hero, and very excitingly, actually, he is going to be one of the main characters in the upcoming Warcraft film by Duncan Jones. I absolutely can't wait for the damn thing. But anyway, that's really as far as this video is going to take us. If you have any feedback or anything like that, please leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>